morning, we bring to a conclusion our series that we've been preaching over the last six or so weeks, Reclaiming Miracle. And I have to say, I'm very appreciative to uh, Mark Mickelson, who always steps in while I'm out. And uh, I'd say I was a little jealous last week that I didn't get to preach on the woman that touched Jesus' robes. That's actually uh, one of my favorite scriptures. Was one of <coughs> actually was uh, one of my sermon dissertations uh, in seminary. So I always love preaching that one. I was a little envious you got to preach that for me. But anyway, <laughs> I'm always appreciative that you uh, that you are able to step in when I'm gone. So, uh, but nonetheless, we've been talking about the miracles of Jesus that he exhibited to the people that. We that received it during his life, and that encouraged the belief, encouraged the people, I can't get the words out already, uh, to believe that he was really the Messiah. And those miracles of healing and transformation, those miracles that enabled the disciples to have that confidence to follow Jesus. These are the same miracles that we claim in our own lives, and these miracles that we've learned that happened over 2,000 years ago, that if we kind of look through our x-ray vision eyes, that we look through the lenses of our faith as we see the miracles happening every single day in our own lives. I think that many of us have come to an understanding that we ourselves are a miracle. Not just a church, that each and every one of us are a miracle made in the divine image of God. And through this divine image, we are called as peacemakers and transformers into the world so that the world might be changed through each of us, that we too also have been changed. You see, this gift of the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. That breath of God that was present with the disciples in that room that day was pure magic. But it wasn't the first time that the Holy Spirit had made its presence among them. In fact, the Holy Spirit had been present right at the very beginning of creation. If you take a look at Hebrews text, especially if you go into the book of Genesis, the first book of the Bible, you'll find that God talks about the wrath of God that was, that was stirring over the earth and caused the separation between the sky and the sea, and the separation of the land, and that his manifestation that was God's promise. And through this, that same spirit talked through the prophets the same way the prophecy to all those early people that wandered out in the desert. As they followed, knowing that God was leading them from a promised land, it was the same spirit that was present even at the beginning of Jesus' birth. It was the same spirit we read about in Advent and in Christmas. And in John's Gospel, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was made flesh, and it dwelled among us. And it's the same spirit that interweaves for the way of the whole of the story of, of Christian living and Christian experiences. And it comes to us today through the fulfillment of this ultimate mighty wind. The ultimate experiences of God's miracles in our lives. The God that comes, the God that came to those early disciples that experienced that Holy Spirit in the miracles of Jesus, not only in the ascension, but this miracle, this miracle that came through this movement 50 days after Passover. So we celebrate the 40 days up to the resurrection, and then following, we go up to 50 days. And mind you, we don't count the, 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 the Sabbath, Sabbath and all that. So at the 50th day of Passover, we're celebrating that Pentecostal fulfillment that God. It was a fulfillment that the Holy Spirit was to do in our lives and is doing in our lives each and every day. No longer was the Holy Spirit just contained in these miraculous moments. No longer was the Holy Spirit just contained by the breath of God or this mighty wind that would sweep the violence that happened in that upper room that day. The Holy Spirit was now set free and lives in the lives of individual believers. 
So the true reality is, it was the ultimate closing act, if you want to look at it, you could say, the miracle of God, God's biggest miracle of the closing act through Jesus, that God would transfer God's power from the heavens to the earth. That's calling us to be those bodies of God. Kind of go, uh, the, the, the final act in a Broadway production, God was doing his big closing act of, of breathing upon and taking that spirit. It's that miraculous power that invites us to encourage and to believe in so our lives can be different. So we might be on fire. So we too might find that passion of this faith that we come to celebrate each and every day in our lives. And then we might find passion in our lives as we transform from just being ordinary or that plain Jane or whatever you want to call it to the super extraordinary people that we are. Folks, it's that power, that wisdom, that fear that is God's breath that we come to experience in our lives. And not just to sit on our you-know-what on a Sunday morning, but to allow that spirit to have a place in the dwelling in each of our lives. This is the gift of Pentecost, the gift of the Holy, the gift that we call upon the high powers to be that presence in our lives. It was the same spirit that visited those disciples that day in the upper room, especially after the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus that these disciples gathered in the room, and it says that they would gather, um, we don't quite know quite where, I mean, it could have been the local Denny's in, you know, in, in that time, or you know, we don't really know where that upper room was located. It could have been down the hall at, you know, someone's house. There is no real specific location of where that upper room was located. But this was the last time that they would gather as they were sent into the world. They were sent out into the, the, the they were sent out into the, the coppice and into the region where they found themselves to be in, where the people were coming to celebrate Passover from all over Judea, all over Rome, Rome, or from wherever else that they descended upon, and descended upon the synagogue. You have to see that where people from that gathered from all over. And in those temple courts, that day they were speaking different languages. And suddenly, this overpowering sense of the Spirit, or the Holy, came upon them. And suddenly, they all were speaking different languages. And in the end, they all got to hear the good news in their native tongue. So those who weren't understanding or realizing or whatever, it was that breath of the Spirit that came upon them, you know, that brought them into this reality to be able to hear. It's kind of like when you go into a foreign country and you start hearing a different language. You know, you think, okay, I can pick up a word here or a word there, but you're still not in tune of what's going on. It's like having that auto interpreter in your ear translating everything for you all of a sudden. It was that experience when the Holy Spirit danced upon them in the upper room. It was the flames that came out of the of each of them that divided each one and they had this flame that danced above them. And I think it's the only time in the church year, especially in MCC, that any any MCC clergy can say that I'm a flaming queen. <laughs> Put all my red on this morning. <laughs> but bless your heart. Okay, I know. <laughs> But you know that Jesus actually legitimizes that I can be a flamer. You know, it, it says that you know all those flames are dancing above us and that in the very moment, though, God is speaking to us through that spirit. Now, this is not just something that happened you know, 2,000 years ago, but it's something that we must call ourselves to be at the fire of Jesus today, in the right now. You know, you can say that, you know, this is one of those times of the year that, okay, we can be out there and be who we are, but we can do that every single day. It's a time that we are called to be passionate about that good news that God brings us, and we are called to have that purpose within our lives. 
Folks, we're not just called to be those chosen frozen like our Presbyterian neighbors and sisters and brothers, you know. If you don't know, there's, there's a thing out there that Presbyterians are called God's chosen frozen because they just kind of sit there, you know, <coughs> kind of with this, you know, you're like this ice age monument or glacier that's sitting there. But we are called to show that passion and that powerful living example of Christ in the world and in our lives. Because that Holy Spirit is on fire above us. You know, it's that being a part of the church of Jesus Christ that we are. That Spirit is above us each and every moment that we live. It's not just contained in the heavens, but it dwells among us and it transforms us to be those creators in our life. I tell you, if the church in general was just sitting around doing nothing, that we would probably have no law, no cause or no purpose to be a church, along with what was happening years ago. Keep in mind that it was recreated for us to acknowledge the power of the Holy Spirit. That it was created as God's humankind, and we were created in that humankind of God's image. That's why we celebrate the passion and the breath of God that comes upon us. You know, God made the birds and the bees and the animals and all the things that exist on earth and calls us to be those co-creators alongside. Now, in our power, you know, not in our own power, but in the power that comes to us through the Holy Spirit. I have to say, if we've neglected or grieved the Holy Spirit in our lives, and if we have allowed that Spirit to be less than or less important in our lives, and we are then ministering it in our own power, then we have forgotten what God's power is in our lives. But if we don't, and we take that, it's who we are. We're the church and individuals and people that are reclaiming Christianity. That's what this whole series has been about over the last six weeks. Reclaiming our Christianity through our faith and who we are in life. Whether it was the fish, the coin in the fish's mouth, or making the wine from the water. All these different miracles that become that extravagant grace of radical inclusion and the compassion for one another. This is that drive that moves us to be the people of power, the people of praise, and to be the ones who know and have everything that we need to transform our lives and transform the world. And we do that while standing firm in power and standing firm in God's presence as that experience becomes our life and seeing that holiness that we are each and every day. We need to claim that power, we need to claim that transforming grace that allows us to be more than who we are each and every moment. We need to send ourselves out into the world because we're those agents of change. Now, there are so many different things that happen in our lives. You know, the world needs people that are willing to put their life out on the line for the cause of justice and peace and the cause of Jesus in our lives. At the same time, if we're just going to be lukewarm, then we're not going to have the Spirit among us. If we're just saying, eh, okay, it's not going to happen. If we're going to be the type that just wants to say that, oh, it's lukewarm and say, well, maybe tomorrow or maybe, you know, whatever, I think that we need to be slapped in the face and woken up to know that the Spirit it's like that violent wind that was in the upper room that day and that sent them out into the world to no longer be frightened. You know, I used to say coming to worship shouldn't be a chore, and it's not. It's a weekly reminder that we are transformed. It's putting us on fire as people. It's people of passion like us. It's the people who are willing to lay it out on the line each and every day for God. You know, I think sometimes we need to be reminded of the new commandment that Jesus created back in the day to, to love God with all of our hearts, our mind, our soul, and our strength, and to love your neighbors and to love yourself. And when we do this, it holds that good news amongst us. You know, we are called to be people of love, not hate. We are called to have forgiveness, not judgment. 
And most of all, to be the people who will reach beyond those boundaries so that we might embrace difference, while at the same time we celebrate that difference. You know, each and every one of us has a story to tell. And it's that story that transforms the teaching of the truth of what our lives are. It's so-called, you can look at it, that our stories are speaking in tongues. And you know that you're speaking in tongues when you've reached out and shared that good news. You know that you've reached out when you share that story in your life, whatever it is. And that story transforms or does something to somebody else from your story. That's breathing the spirit upon those in our lives. It's those experience that when we get to know people as individuals, that it's that fiery presence that is being shared and being that transformation. You know, if you go out into the world, how many times have you, you've come across people that may be in your same state of mind or uh, coming out as a gay individual or a lesbian individual or a trans individual, how many times have we heard that coming to MCC has transformed our lives? That years back when we didn't have a place to worship, that MCC saved people. I don't mean saved people from, you know, from Christianity, has saved people from their own lives because they didn't have a place where they could be who they were. They were transformed. And we hear the stories of other people, of their coming out stories or whatever, or the experiences that they've had, whether gay or straight or whatever it is, that transformation of the experiences in your lives, that's the spirit of God that we're transferring. That's what Pentecost is all about, is that fiery breath of God that has come to us of being the spirit of transforming the world. You know, today we celebrate Pentecost, and we celebrate it as the birthday of the Church Universal. And, you know, we invite ourselves as a church that we all go back, and it's that, that timing, it's kind of like the, the start of a new year, where you start, and you get back on track, and you start moving forward. Pentecost is that time that we come back, and we get back on the railroad tracks if we've gotten derailed a little bit, to start looking at what we would hope things would be, or want, you know. You know, it's at a point that we're at a place that is radical inclusion, a place that we might celebrate God's diversity of God's people, and that we're all these people back 2,000 years ago that came from Rome or South Milwaukee or from wherever, that we come as God's people. But we come to be transformed because we follow God and we follow God through Jesus. So I said earlier that we all speak in tongues and that we all have a story, that our stories will transform and touch lives of other people. You may not realize it when you do it, but a lot of times your stories will transform somebody else's lives. You know, we find ourselves that we tell our story, that we tell it, and it's like speaking in tongues. You know, when you share it, it's like taking that and taking that wind that's above us and spreading it with the hope that there may be hope for somebody else. I was uh, on my trip and came across a lovely couple from Aruba and um, we had a conversation. And there was something at, they were actually at my table for dinner on the ship and it was something that the, the wife uh, of the couple shared with me, and I just had to take a step back and say, yeah, you know. Um, there was some moments that I kind of looked back of what was going on uh, through, the, through my life. And it was the first time I, um, in a long time that I had taken a, a, a cruise without either of my parents being with me. Um, my folks loved to cruise, and it kind of brought the memories back of that transformation of what it was like having that that uh, that memory. But it was also that the things that she said of how life is for them to live in Aruba. Um, they actually have a very 
wonderful life in Aruba. Uh, her husband works for the Aruba government and um, young couple and very sweet, but just hearing the different things that, you know, we take for granted each and every day as individuals. And the things that we can easily do. Earlier, Julia, Julia asked if I got my passport stamped when we went into Cuba, and I, I, didn't, I didn't even realize it until after we had gone through Immigration and Customs, um, to the, they do it so fast. And somebody, somebody asked me on the tour that we were, like, did you get your passport stamped? And I'm like, I don't know. I like flip through the book, and yeah, there's a big pink, big pink stamp, you know, very appropriate. Um, but, you know, the, let a flaming queen in the Cuba give a pink stamp. Um, but there was that stamp. And you, know, you just take for granted. But um, yeah, so you just don't realize all those different things. But it's that transformation that we have. You know, the story that sends us out of the upper room each and every day that, you know, we take that and we transform our lives. You know, and this story sends us out of the upper room this day and sends us back out into the world so that our own transformations might be the transformation of somebody else. That's the definition of Pentecost. Transforming through something else. Transforming something through something in your life through other people. So, as we go forward and look at the transformations in our life, let them be those good transformations that we have each and every day. That's what we are as Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church. We are that transformation. Happy Pentecost. Amen. Amen.